Hey guys, this is Andy McCann, owner of CrossFit Garage, here to talk to you how to build a firm foundation or lay a firm foundation, whatever the words are, in fitness, food, and finances. So, hey man, the first thing I'm going to tell you is don't let perfect be the enemy of done. Yes, I just stumbled over my own intro and I'm not going to re-record it because I never re-record anything and I never redo workouts. I just do the workout and show up and do the thing and whatever. So, we're going to talk a little bit about hook grip and some areas where I messed up. I'm going to let you know. Um, I'm going to answer some questions about credit cards because I uh, should have had more in there. And unfortunately, this podcast will come out like a month after the other one, but whatever. And some other things that are going on in the gym right now, just some ideas and mindsets like, hey, what do we do and how to react to it? And, and just what's going on? So the idea of um, kind of on that, maybe the finance side of like, how do you run a business? So I'm going to just give you some insights into what's going down and, and how we're trying to uh, fix and alleviate and all that stuff. Okay. So first thing I want to mention is, uh, so we've got uh, uh, Coach Laura. Actually, let me go find the sheet and pull it. Well, whatever. She's going to do in the fall. Coach Laura is going to host a um, whole 30 type of food um, work group. So you can get into that into the fall. And um, it's basically learning to eat whole foods and there's gonna be a, you know, a group, you're gonna help each other out and all that good stuff and she's gonna lead you through it. It's gonna be great. Um, a lot of people try this Whole30. You can go Google it and see what it's about. Essentially, it's eating um, whole foods for 30 days and eating clean. So weirdly, when you go down the rabbit hole of clean, you end up with chickens in your backyard. So um, I eat a lot of eggs. And now that all my kids are home from college, everyone's eating a lot of eggs. My, my chickens can't keep up. I actually might have to go buy eggs. Um, I know there's a lady down the street who does uh, eggs. And so I, here's what I would recommend to you. Rather going down the rabbit hole of getting your own chickens, I would probably say just go find someone you can buy eggs from. Yes, they're going to be expensive, but they're free range, they're organic. I mean, they're the best type of eggs you're ever gonna get. They look different, they don't taste any different, but the uh, yolk is a lot uh, different. It's usually bigger and uh, more full. If you're not eating, uh, uh, if you're not into eating the yolk, then don't do this, don't waste your money. The egg white is stupid. Eat the whole damn egg, that's what it's there for. It was made the right way. Humans, when they go and mess with things, we don't make it better, we make it stupid. So. Eat the whole damn egg. That's what it's there for. Um, find someone that has them. If you go down the rabbit hole of I want chickens, yeah, come talk to me. We got maybe 15 or so people in the gym that are doing chickens. And um, uh, from what I hear, they love it. I think the overall word that I get is don't get attached to them because they're like four bucks if you get them from Tractor Supply and they die. And sometimes you don't know why. That's just a wild animal. Or maybe not wild animal, a farm animal, uh, I don't know, pr producing animal. So we had a chicken, or no, we had a duck with a foot that was messed up. And my daughter asked, hey, can we take it to the vet? And I'm like, uh, sure. And so she left, she came back. I said, hey, turns out the duck's leg was okay. And it flew away. She's like, it did not fly away. I'm like, yeah, it totally flew away. I chased it and it just took to the air and flew away. Yeah, it, she knew. It didn't fly away. It was, uh, we named that one Christmas dinner. So, uh, <laughs> it, uh, don't take the pets like that, like a hamster. You don't take the hamster to a vet. You just go replace it. Anyway, don't get attached to them. Don't name them. Okay. So the thing I want to talk to you about first is the hook grip. What is the hook grip and why should I be using it? If you're brand new, you probably never even heard of it and you don't even know why I'm talking about it. Let me say this. You do not have to use the hook grip but it is valuable. If you go watch an Olympic lifting meet, everybody's hook gripping. So um, if you hook grip, you become an official Olympic lifter, or at least you give an Olympic lifter their wings. So it's great to do. I've been doing CrossFit for 17-ish years, somewhere in that ballpark, and I barely ever hook grip. One, I didn't start that way, and two, it hurts my thumb when I do it. Three, I got tiny hands, so until I realized I should move down to the smaller bar, which sometimes people call the ladies bar, but it's not the ladies bar because this guy right here is using it. It's just a 35 pound bar. Um, it makes the grip on everything I do a whole lot easier and uh, because it's smaller. So I could hook grip it, but um, I choose not to because it kind of feels weird and I just don't lift that heavy to really need it. The reason, well actually, what is a hook grip? So let's do this. In your mind, well actually maybe even with your hands, imagine you're doing a deadlift. Reach down and grab that bar. You, you wrap your um, uh, fingers around and your thumb goes the other way. So a normal type grip, not a uh, monkey grip or with your thumbs on the same side. So you got a full grip on this bar. You're gonna take your uh, pointer finger and your middle finger and make a peace sign while still gripping the bar. And then you're gonna put those two fingers over the top of your thumb, creating, it's not really a hook, it's more like a, um, you know, it's like that trick where someone says, hey look, my thumb or my fingers have been chopped off, right? And you're doing that little slide the thumb thing. Anyway, 
It's a hook grip. And what it's supposed to do is create a uh, stronger grip on the bar. So rather than having five going one way and then one supporting them all, you have two going one way, the third one going the opposite, and then two gripping onto that third, which technically creates a stronger grip, right? Um, if you're doing a deadlift, just switch a hand over, whatever. Anyway, you don't have to do it, but you probably should. Um, it's primarily used in Olympic lifts. It has no real value if you're doing a bench press or if you're doing a, uh, a press or um, eh, deadlift maybe. Usually it's the violent lifting of the bar off the ground, which explosion is the clean or uh, the snatch. So it's one of those two lifts. Probably not gonna hook grip on a jerk because the bar is up on your shoulders and you don't even have a really good grip on it, right? So that pressing motion isn't the big deal. It's pulling it off the ground, which is the big deal. Some people use wrist wraps, and I've got a picture of these wrist wraps right here. Um, uh, a lot of you guys use gear. I'm, I'm just not into gear. I'm not opposed to it, but I just don't really use gear. I'm going to link this so you guys can go buy them if you want. Um, these are just some cotton linen straps. It's got uh, like 45,000 or 28,000 uh, reviews and 4.7 stars, so they're pretty good. Essentially, it, it mimics the same sort of thing. Here's the thing though, I wouldn't use these on an Olympic lift because I have heard of people doing this and wrapping them around and then going up and over their head and then wanting to drop the bar, but they can't because their hand is strapped in. So it's like when you do a bench press, you don't put clips on the end of it because if you put clips on the end of the bench press and you get stuck, you can't dump weight. With the clips off, you just lean left, lean right and the weights come off. You look like a fool, but the weights come off. This is also why you should have someone spot you because it's just super helpful. Now, the other one you could use, you might've seen a lot of people in the gym using these uh, right here. These are uh, basically, they're just grips. They're like, uh, it's the CrossFit equivalent to what a gymnastic uh, uh, member, girl, whatever, sports participant, um, gymnast, a gymnast, there you go, would use. And the idea is just to keep some of the rubbing off your hand as you rotate around. I fix that by not getting a full grip. I drop it down a little bit so that my, um, uh, the bar is rotating through my fingers and not where my calluses would be. That's a little bit uh, higher up. I still put my thumb around, but when I drop down, it creates a better arc and I don't really ever pull it. When I do chest to bar pull-ups, that sometimes it will get me if I uh, do some stupid, which I sometimes roll in the world of stupid, I know. So sometimes it happens, but you can get these grips. Um, let's see, sometimes the grip is then increases the size of the diamond of your hand, which makes the whole thing a little bit harder. Guys don't usually have an issue with this because their hands are usually larger. Girls, maybe. Um, the other thing that can happen is the ones you're looking at right here, your fingers would go through the holes and so it can't get rewrapped on you. But um, uh, so Sam, on a, on a good side, Sam was like, hey, let me try uh, this bar muscle up. I mean, yeah, let's, let's see you try it. So Sam, she went up, uh, just a normal pull up. I was like, that is really high. I think you can do this. Let me just give you a little push in the back. We'll see how it goes. So gave her a push in the back. She went straight up. I'm like, of course you did because, well, I've seen a thousand reps of this or more than a thousand and I knew she'd be able to do it. She's got the strength. She had the motion. She had the gymnastics capability. So she went up. So I said, hey, let's do this a couple more times. We did. And then she went up one more time and came down and the wrist strap, uh, which was loose, had gotten back under her hand. So when she came off, it kind of stuck. And so then her hand was pulled out of the uh, wrist grip um, strap, which isn't a big deal. It came right out, but it did give her a bit of bruising. And she's like, uh-oh, is this going to be a problem? Like, I don't know. Let's see what happens. So uh, true to form, Sam's like, you know, whatever. Let me just do this thing. Do you hear that sound right there? That sound right there is a sound of joy for Levi. My wife fired us as the lawn people for my own lawn. <laughs> so she hired somebody else. Actually, um, Jason came out from the gym and he has a huckleberry uh, landscaping and he did a great job on the yard. And then one thing he'll do is if he puts in the materials, you can then hire him to support the uh, yard work. And so she did. Levi has never been happier. <laughs> And so my yard work went down, my costs went up, but hey, if it makes your wife happy, you do it. Anyway, so back to Sam. So she goes up, comes down, hands get a little bit pulled, and then she wastes a little bit of time. She rubs some dirt on it. I said, hey, you want to give it a shot anyway without the grips? She's like, hmm, I don't know. Interesting. I didn't realize how much sometimes grips become a crutch. So she didn't say it, but I could see it in her eyes like, hmm, I'm not sure I can do this without those. I was like, well, you want to try some chalk? and just give it a shot. She's like, yeah, let's do that. And so she took a deep breath, chopped up her hand, well, chopped her hands, took a deep breath, jumped up the bar, did a marvelous swing, did a marvelous kip, and pulled herself straight up. And she's like looking at me like, holy crap. Actually let out a great squeal. It's super awesome. We have a video, posted it everywhere, but um, that was awesome. On her own initiative, strength, gymnastic skill, a little bit of determination, and a little bit of let's get over the fear, boom, she's up. It was awesome, all on her own. 
I love it. Anyway, so these wrist straps, straps, wraps and straps can be useful. I tend to not use them. I mean, if my hand's ripping, then I'm gonna look for a different solution. But anyway, back to the hook grip. So should you use a hook grip? Maybe. This question come, came up because um, I do an expert counsel uh, chat, so I get a, like a seven minute window to answer a question from this guy, Jack Spierko, who does The Survival Podcast, which is all about um, living a good life, even when times are bad or if they're not. So basically being healthy and fit, having a garden, those sort of things. It's not about zombies, although that sometimes they go down that road for fun and make fun of people who you know think zombies are taking over the world. But um, somebody sent in a question and asked about hook grip, so I thought I'd bring that to you guys too. So the hook grip, that's about it. Do you need to use it? Yeah, I would try it out. If you're brand new, it's easier to start with it. It's been so long since I have had um, not been using the hook grip that the weights I use and the lack of pressure that I put my thumb under makes it super awkward to do it. So I just leave it alone. Now, on the other side, a funny story, a long time ago, maybe 2009-ish, Tim Nickerson was coaching and we were doing 185 pound hang power cleans. So the bar's just above your knees and you pop it up to your shoulders. And I could do one and then I'd do two and it'd pop right out of my hands. And I was like, dang gum it. And he said, hey, did you chalk your hands? I'm like, now nah, let me give it another shot. Chalk my hands, I did one, two, and then the third one, it pops out of my hands. And he said, hey, Andy, have you ever just tried to grip the bar whole, harder? And I was like, you jackass. And so I thought, well, maybe he's right. So he's walking off coaching other people. So I thought, okay, let me really focus in on my hands and not the shrug and all that other stuff and see if I can hold on. Sure enough, I gripped the bar hold harder and I did all five, <laughs> no problem. So thank you, Tim, for showing this old man that uh, you should just grip the har bar holder. Uh, bu grip the bar harder. Okay, so next thing to do. Um, I sent out an email and did a little podcast video on credit card fees. Thank you for the questions, and I did not consider this, so thank you for Chris, Justin, and two other of you guys said, hey, can't you just do bank-to-bank Zelly transfers like it was a PayPal or Venmo? I'm like, you know what? Actually, you could. So here's a way, if you're interested in helping us out, um, getting rid of credit card, credit card fees, what I don't want to do is just go click and just make everyone pay more. Just I'd rather be creative and come up with solutions, and this is a great creative way. Now, some of you have said, I don't really even care. You can just like pass it on to me, and I don't want to change my credit card. I'm like, that's totally fine. Thank you for the help. So I appreciate you guys. So on the Zelly side of it, if you have a bank and it's in the 20, it's, it's year 2024, your bank is attached to a tool called Zelly, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, so, or maybe it's just Zell, I don't really know. And it's their um, solution to Venmo and PayPal. They're like, hey, everyone stop using a tool that's not ours. How can we create a way to transfer money from bank to bank um, uh, you know, using a tool? And so they have this Zelly tool. So I use it directly through Wells Fargo. You, you can actually download the app and have it go that way. But basically what it lets you do is move money from a bank account to bank account. Just like I was in Venmo and I moved money from a Venmo to a Venmo, there's no charge to that. The problem with Venmo is if you have Venmo attached to your credit card and you don't actually fund Venmo, so it's like, let's just say there's $1,000 sitting in Venmo and you send somebody 100 bucks. No problem, it just uses your Venmo money. It's just them changing the ledger on an Excel spreadsheet. Well, hopefully they're not using Excel, but you know what I mean, they're just moving numbers. They're not really moving any money around, they're just changing it, right? They're still holding all of your cash. They only care when you take the money out. That's why they say, hey, it's free if you give us like five days, but it's like uh, 20 bucks if you take it out in one day. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so this is their answer to it. Um, if you, your bank is your bank, so it is funded, right? If you have your credit card attached to Venmo, PayPal and all that, when you do a charge, it actually just attaches it to your credit card and it has the same fees plus a tiny bit more. So you're actually doing us even worse. So don't do that. Um, so if you want to try that, please let me know and I'll help you work that out. And then when you send it to the bank, um, it goes right into our CrossFit Garage bank account and it has your name on it. So I can easily find you and be like, boop, 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 boop. And it's like seconds for me to go through and uh, click, hey, everybody's paid. So. Um, the one thing I don't think it does is uh, let you know, hey, you need to pay something. So you just have to remember, set a reminder, like the first of the month or something like that. Um, so, or I could, I don't know, I could come up with some solution somehow, I bet. But anyway, that is a solution. Thank you, Chris and Justin and the other two that I can't think of right now for coming up with that. So today is um, Wednesday the 22nd. By the time this... <laughs> podcast comes out, it'll probably be like June the 22nd. So I'm sorry for the delay. This is just how podcasts work. This is what I talk on and it comes up when it comes up. All right. So the next thing, um, uh, what else are we doing for coaching? So you've probably seen uh, Owen in the gym here and there. I'm having him come work with me a lot because I think I can learn and then bring it to the rest of us. But just like we want you guys to be better with the, uh, uh, I don't know, muscle up, 
I also want us coaches to be better at coaching you in the muscle up or whatever. So I have him come in here or there and try and jump into different classes to uh, either coach the class and then let us watch, which I've done a couple times and picked up really good uh, skills, some different ideas to try out. So it's just nice and fresh. I had gone to a bunch of different gyms uh, just doing some drop-ins on some coaches that I heard were pretty good. And that's a long drive and I have to go to crazy classes to get to the right people. It was worth it, but it's much easier to bring somebody that's on CrossFit seminar staff to us. So that's what I do. He's on staff. He does level ones and I think maybe some level twos. And so he's bringing that directly to us and he just lives down the street. So it's, it's easy and it's awesome. It helps him, helps us. So you'll see him pop into classes here and there. Sometimes he's coaching and we're watching. Sometimes we're coaching and he's doing an evaluation. So <laughs> you got is no surprise. The funny thing on that one is when he evals me every time, it's like, Andy, you talk too much. I'm like, yep, <laughs> I don't know if I can stop it. Um, so there is that. Uh, I do appreciate some of you guys when I mention that. You're like, hey, that's just you. It's kind of funny. We, we, it's endearing. I'm like, thank you for putting up with my uh, stupidity. Um, but I do realize it and, and I am working on it. Um, so you'll see him pop in in here and there uh, every once in a while. The other thing we're doing, I, uh, I love that our coaches love to hang out with each other and with y'all, but with each other. The problem is when they go on vacation together, I didn't really think about how that's gonna impact me so greatly. So uh, Monday and Tuesday, I did pretty much every class except for the 5 a.m. and 6 a.m., thank you, Skylar. And um, I was completely worn out. Um, I love coaching and I love you guys. I think by the third day, I would have sold the gym for $13 because <laughs> I was just so worn out. So today, uh, Wednesday, I went to the 6 a.m. class. I didn't I didn't mean really to go to that class. I couldn't sleep. Um, anyway, and uh, I was like, yeah, whatever, I'm up. Let's go and do this thing. And it was fun just to go in, talk to the guys and do lifting. And Danny tell me, Andy, you're, doing, you're being stupid. Do like this. I'm like, perfect. So that's what I love. She's helping us out. The coaches help. I don't have to think about it. It's kind of like you guys. I love the 4 p.m. class. All the medical ladies come in and they're like, I just want to unload and you take care of me. I'm like, yeah, let me do that. But with that, I realized something that I did um, in, in, uh, accidentally in the business is when they go on vacation together, I'm picking up all these classes. And while I think we're okay on coaching staff, we're not. Um, so what I'm looking for is some other people out there, our community first, which was like 20 of you that said you're interested, Kate's in process right now, that <clears throat> will go get your level one, you can do it online, and apparently now you can take the test until you pass, so you're gonna pass no matter what. Um, you can do that, and we can do some shadowing with us. So the way the shadowing would work is you simply just come in and watch class and then ask questions. And then eventually when you feel comfortable, I am not gonna press you in it, right? When you feel comfortable, we'll have you do the warm up, and then we'll talk about it afterwards, right? And then we'll have you do the specific drill, like hey, this is how you do a deadlift, right? And then we'll talk about it. And then we'll have you do a full class or something like that, right? So we'll, we'll take it piece by piece and take it as slow or as fast as you wanna go, right? The one thing I can't do is dilute the service, so we wanna make sure that we're uh, continuing giving our, you, know, you guys the, the coach mentoring and accountability that you want and desire. Um, but also, I need to fix the problem of uh, we all can't go on vacation at the same time. <laughs> well, that can never happen. But as I need to find people that aren't going to go in that group. So I need, this is, this is, there, here you go. I need coaches that won't go with me or Jamie or Danny or Laura or Skylar <laughs> on vacation. Uh, we're friends, but not that good of friends, right? So um, uh, we can have more coaching staff. Actually, so what I'm really looking to do is pick up two people. Um, the class, I mean, my class times are always up for grabs because I just fill in everywhere. So really what I got right now is um, Monday, 4 and 5 p.m., 4, 5 and 6 p.m., and Tuesday, 4, 5 and 6 p.m., as well as Friday, 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Those are the classes I um, coach on the regular. I fill in a lot, so you'll see me in different classes and bouncing around, <clears throat> but that's the regular. So if you're like, you know what, then that's not interesting to me. I'd like to do that. What, what does it involve? Well, just come talk to me. I'll let you know. Do you have to coach all of that all of the time? Nah, we have an Excel spreadsheet. I know, kind of goofy, but that's what we use. And then when you can't coach, you just delete your name out. It pops up in yellow. And then anybody that sees yellow can fill their name in. So it could even be a mix up. Like, hey, I want to coach the five and six, but I'd like to work out at the four. Okay, we can see if we can make that work. Maybe there's someone we can do an exchange with or have two people kind of fill in that role, right? I will say this, just like you get better at doing an Olympic lift by putting in reps, you get better at coaching by putting in the reps. So um, going back to the uh, story with um, uh, Samantha, Sam, who was doing the bar muscle up, when she said, hey, look at the beginning of the bar muscle up, she did a big swing and a kip, could I do a bar muscle up? I knew immediately the answer is yes, because I've seen thousands of them. When you see thousands of bar muscle ups or whatever the rep is going to be, 
it's kind of easy to deduce what the problem is. And usually there's a standard thing like, hey guys, on the overhead squat, your shoulders are tight. I mean, I don't even have to know who the guy is. It's like 99% of the time, their shoulders are tight. So, you know, loosen up your shoulders, get them really warmed up. Um, and we do have overhead squats today. So I'll get to have a lot of tight shoulders. Anyway, so we're looking for some coaches. Ho- I actually, by the time this, maybe I'll slide this podcast to a different spot. I don't know. But by the time this podcast p- c- comes out on the normal schedule, hopefully I've already solved it. So I did go to the training directory. So if you go to something like CrossFit Trainer Directory.com or something like that, maybe there's more dots in there. <clears throat> actually, I should pull that up. You can probably see it right here. Uh, let's see. CrossFit. Tra- there it is. Directory Trainer. Boop. I was just in it, so there it is. So it's trainerdirectory.crossfit.com. If you go in there, you can pop up people, uh, search by pretty much anything, and see who comes up. So hey, look, McCann. Let's see how many McCanns are out there with their level one, two, three, and four. We can hit find trainers. Um, I know there's another McCann out in um, England, and oh, the Brian McCann. How about that? I wonder if this is the Brian McCann I know. That's interesting. So Imam, we were both in, um, oh, Ireland. I said England. Sorry, buddy. And I got Evan, Levi, Olivia. So I got a lot of, look how many McCanns there are. What the heck? We should have, oh, and there's my sister, Vivian McCann. Oh, Viv. Actually, I need to reach out to you, Viv. Um, Michael McCann, oh, but he's in England. That's fascinating. There is a lot of McCanns into CrossFit. Who knew? Um, Andrew McCann, there I am. Of course, it's Andrew, so nobody knows who that is. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> pulled up those and I uh, did some uh, messaging and say, hey, you're a level two or level three. That's what I'm going for first. We're going to try to get everyone up to their level two standards. Uh, let me know if you're interested in um, some coaching. So what I know now, you have to have a really good match with who we are. Sometimes it's not a good fit and you got a, a person who's like, I really want everyone to go to the games. Like, yeah, that's not us. Or um, look, everyone should just do steroids. I'm like, yeah, that's not us too. We're happy, humble, helpful people who want to be healthy and fit now as well as in our 90s. If you like that and you like bettering yourself, then you're probably going to enjoy us, right? So we're serious, but not too serious. Anyway, uh, so I am looking for some coaches. So if you think you are interested on the light, not something like, Andy, I want to make a full-time gig of this. What I have found is my expenses, thanks to the landlord, I can't really give anybody a full-time gig in this thing um, because this damn expenses keep going up with the rent. Uh, So if you are a commercial real estate agent, help me find something close-ish here or tell me how to build something that would uh, meet the needs. I think if I built something, I'd want it to be a little bit bigger and add a other thing that would rent beside us. So I think the gym really only needs to be about 4,000 square feet. Right now we have 5,000 square feet and it's probably too much. But anyway, so um, we'll be here forever. We're not going away. There may come a time when this old guy is too old to be in the gym and somebody else will buy the gym, but it'll be somebody that has the same mentality. And it'd be like when I'm going to go walk the Appalachian Trail and I can't find anybody to, uh, you know, take over, then okay, my time is up. But I, I do realize at 50, there's probably a time, there's a time horizon where, okay, does it make sense for, you know, a, a 50 year old guy to play Pokemon, which I know that's not a great example, but you know what I mean. It's probably better suited to have a, a 30 year old kind of take that journey on. So we'll see, whatever. Okay, so what else did I want to go with you on this? So if you're interested in coaching, especially in those time slots, let me know. If you got other time slots uh, uh, that could work, let me know. There are multiple options you could come up with. It could just be, hey, Andy, I got my level one. I just want to fill in if there's an emergency. Like uh, Nick Lubbers or Lubbers, he works for CrossFit and he's like, hey, yeah, let me know if you ever have a problem. I will jump in. I mean, I literally get work for CrossFit. So yeah, so he is an emergency man for us. I always forget to um, ask him, but Nick, man, I appreciate it. Um, we've got, uh, so weirdly, the thing that, that qualifies you to be covered by the insurance that I pay for is you have to have your level one. Once you have your level one, or there has to be a level one in the building, um, but if you're coaching, then you're probably the level one in the building. And so I need that level one. Like I said, you can go take it online. Right now, I think it's 1100 bucks. And um uh, Kate said that the test is online too, and you could take it until you pass it, which is great because um, when you do it in person, the test is so damn tricky. I know people who have taken it eight times, not because they're dumb. It's just they ask the questions in that way that's like, if you were or were not going to be a human or inhuman and you were doing or maybe not doing CrossFit, would it be better or not better? And you're like, wait, 
what the hell are you asking me? So they have some questions like that, and I just don't like it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the bigger part of it is not the, I mean, yeah, I want you to have the knowledge, and I want you to be covered by the level one, but I want to coach you into um, how to coach, which, again, it's the reps. There's a lot more to it than just, um, well, we did an episode on that. This, you know, it's time management. It's presence and attitudes. You got to start and stop on time. You got to, you know, get the warm-up in, whiteboard, and whatever, all that stuff. Um, presence and attitude. You got to have a smile on your face. You can't be, uh, oh, today was a bad day. Let me show you a bad day. Nah, none of that. People come in and have a good time. It's the best hour of their day. You got to be on stage, baby. If you like to perform, this is probably for you. If you hate to perform, this is probably not for you. Um, you have to be able to see what's going on wrong. You've been here doing this. You probably can see things. But then you also have to be able to correct. Um, that can be kind of hard because not everyone takes the same cue the same way. So you got to have a multiple cues. And those are the things we're really helping out with. The other is you got to have these progressions in mind. Like, how do I get somebody into a clean and jerk? I mean, hey, pick the bar up and do a clean and jerk. Nah, we want to take it step by step. Now, there are some of you that have been doing this for 40 billion years that I could be like, like, hey, Joe, do a clean and jerk. He's like, yeah, I got it, right? Warm yourself up for a, a clean and jerk, Joe. He would warm himself up appropriately, no problem, right? Sharon, too. A couple of you guys, David Wallace, you guys, been here forever. You could totally do that. Anyway, let me know. So it is a um, hobby job. Uh, you would just be signed up for you know a time slot. There are some advantages to having that. You get a key to the gym. You can use a gym whenever you want. I have a key to the gym, and I never use a gym for, for whenever I want. So is it an advantage? I don't know. If you want to work on something, sure. Um, <clears throat> let me know if you are interested in that. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, let's see, this podcast will come out right at the beginning of June, maybe. So we have summer strength on, um, 9 30 AM class. We're, we're telling people, Hey, bring a friend with you. Uh, it's usually a lightly attended class anyway, so let's fill it up. There is a time coming in July when, um, all the girls are going on vacation together and this session of me just doing a lot of two days in a row has taught me, Andy, you cannot do this alone. So when that week comes, I will probably condense the classes. One, it's the summer, probably people are on vacation anyway, but two, I literally know I can't handle it. And um, I naively thought, I got three kids that have their level one, they've been doing some coaching, they've done the summer strength for program for a while, and they're actually pretty intelligent on this whole stuff and can coach pretty well. Um, Olivia actually got herself an internship, so she is off doing intern work, so she won't ever be here in, in any timely fashion, so she's out. Um, Levi is, uh, is a maybe, we'll see. Uh, he has uh, college coming up and some things he's needing to do. Anyway, it's it's a hit or miss with him. Also, he wants to bro out, and when you bro out, basically you're eating a lot of protein and just doing a lot of bicep curls, right? And then um, Evan is battling uh, a liver parasite. So apparently if you eat sushi or sushimi or whatever, you know, it's not prepared exactly correct. There is a potential possibility, maybe kind of sorta, for you to pick up a parasite. So the particular parasite is called a um, liver fluke. And I don't know why it's called that, but um, it uh, basically attached it to your liver. So in the 80s, you could take a pill and get a, uh, uh, a worm inside of you to help you lose weight so you could get tapeworms, which it's crazy that they were allowed to do that. I don't even know, like, <laughs> what FDA said, yes, you can do it. I think they eventually banned it. But just like you would with your dog, you give them a medicine and then they go poop all day long and they get the worms out and it kills them and maybe I think it kills their eggs or whatever. You can't really do that to a human because, I mean, we're humans and we're not dogs, so you gotta do it like specifically correctly. Plus, it's your liver. So he's under the protocol doing all that stuff, but it just leaves him weak and I can't have him coaching what I thought I could probably have him coaching. Um, thank you, some of you know about this. Thank you for your prayers. He is doing a lot better. Uh, Verity is uniquely suited to take care of people in a non-traditional way in medically stuff. So she's got a lot of cool things she knows and a lot of people she knows. So um, <clears throat> it's going pretty good for him. His big thing right now is to get those things out of him and any, uh, uh, you know, if they, I don't know what they do, if they lay eggs or they just split apart, whatever is inside, you know, get it out and clean it out. Um, fortunately, your liver, weirdly, um, replaces itself every seven days. So it generates new cells. I guess this is why uh, you can drink a lot and not really kill your liver because it keeps replacing itself. But um, anyway, um, I, I don't have as much support as I thought I would have. Um, and you know what? You should probably never like <laughs> make your children, not make, but have your children jump into a job that they didn't know they were jumping into. I probably should have done better communication on that. Anyway, so if you see Kate up on stage with me or one of the coaches, that's what she's doing. If you see another person up there on stage, on stage up in front of the class, this is what they're doing. They're learning and we are trying to teach them. You'll probably see them um, either watching us or us watching them as we progress and they'll do bits and pieces until they get uh, confidence and feel they know what they're doing and we know what they know what they're doing. Um, thank you, uh, Nick, 
um, Armenta for jumping in today. So we've got uh, Skylar's on a bit of a break at the moment and should be back in about two weeks. But um, he picked up the 5 a.m. class, so we're working out that solution. And I'm picking up a bunch of uh, afternoon classes. So all good. We have a great team that supports each other. So if you love teamwork, yay, that's us. If you um, love CrossFit, then weirdly, that's us too. So you're going to love it. And um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy, if you like helping people, right? Then, right. If you, how about this? If you find yourself in class looking at someone going, hey, I think I know how to help them. Like Gary today, good job. Or Craig the other day, good job on the row. So it was, uh, what was it today? It was um, deadlift, hang power clean, and uh, overhead squat. So Gary, good call. And then uh, Craig, you had the row. I think, I don't remember who it was, but you're telling them something and it was correct. And you could see on that graph I was showing you. So if you find yourself looking and watching going, hey, I should say something. Yeah, come talk to me. You, you got the right mindset. You want to help. Um, there are some things I'll tell you as Kate's learning right now. It's not as cut and dry as you thought it would be. Well, I just tell them to karate chop it. Now, yeah, you can't always tell people to karate chop it. There's, you know, things that you just got to be aware of, but that comes with reps and, um, and it's a good community. So it's, uh, I think having the idea of putting it out there that we are happy, humble, helpful people has really created a awesome environment of humility and helpfulness and smiles because that's what it stands for, right? And so it's just a good group of people to be uh, with and working for and all that. Um, okay, so uh, I think that's about it for today. If you need help and you're in the Woodstock area, I am Andy McCann. You can find me at uh, on the website, Andy at CrossFitGarage.com. I also have a YouTube channel. Let me pull that puppy up so I can remember what um, my channel is actually called. I think it's at Andy McCann 42. Let's see. View your channel. Yeah, at Andy McCann 42. It's going to be a lot of uh, yeah. chickens and CrossFit and kids doing cool things, adventure races and other stuff. Um, thank you guys for helping me get above 1,000 subscribers before we hit uh, uh, June. I think or maybe it was May. I forgot which one it was. But Levi said, Dad, there's no way you're going to do it. And boom. We did it. Uh, we also have a podcast. If you'd like to be on an episode, talk about your journey. The podcast, right, is uniquely called, uh, let's see if I can find it. It's just, right now, actually, I did change the name, so it's going to be called something different. Let me do, what would you find it on? Spotify? Let's do Spotify. 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 Let me pause this and get logged in. There it is right there. I changed the name, started changing it. I'm experimenting. So it's CF Garage. Of course, stands for CrossFit Garage with Andy McCann. So I think I'm going to actually just change it to fitness, food, and finance since that's what it's about and um, just do it over time. So I'll do CF Garage dash fitness, food, finance, and then CFG fitness, food, finance, and then just fitness, food, and finance because that's what we talk about. But anyway, if you want to be on there, I think we're up to like 130 episodes and I haven't done a member interview in quite a while. So if you are interested in sharing your story, I would love for people to hear it. Probably the biggest thing that I need people to understand is that CrossFit is for anybody. It's the shortest and the best hack to fitness that I have ever found. Um, you just basically have to show up and listen to the coach and that's it. So if you want to share your story, I am here and I would love to have you. All right, guys, y'all take care. Have a happy day.